శ్రీ గురుభ్యో నమ శ్రీమాత్రే నమ సభాయ నమ ప్రాస్ట్రేటింగ్ అట్ ద లోటస్ ఫీట్ ఆఫ్ శ్రీ కామకోటి భక్త కామకోటి కంచి కామకోటి పీఠం శంకరాచార్య శ్రీ శంకర విజయేంద్ర సరస్వతి స్వామివారు ఆన్ బిహాఫ్ ఆఫ్ శ్రీ కామకోటి భక్తి కేంద్ర ఇట్ ఈస్ మై ఆనర్ అండ్ బ్లెస్సింగ్ టు బి వెల్కమింగ్ యూ ఆల్ టు ఎట్ అనదర్ గ్రేట్ లెక్చర్ సిరీస్ ఇన్ ఇంగ్లీష్ ఆన్ లలిత సహస్రనామా బై శ్రీ పిఆర్ కన్నన్ సర్ who is a repository of vedic knowledge we also have shrimati padma rajagopalan mummy joining us in this beautiful journey for rendering the shlokas of lalita sahasranamam with her melodious voice while kannan sir explains the shlokas verse after the other namaskaram kannan sir and padma mummy i'm really honored Namaskar to be introducing these great personalities who always have been supporting us in share and sharing their knowledge and wisdom many of you have already known kannan sir and have tasted the gnanamritam of uh, mukha panchasati through his lecture series english lecture series in mukha panchasati and the recent uh, uh, his lecture on ramo vigrahva dharma on the eve of pranapratishta at ayodhya of ramlalla pranapratishta of ramlalla at ayodhya a multifaceted personality shri pr kannan sir is a genius ietn he holds a mtech degree from iit chennai and holds a pg diploma from holland he worked in many reputed organizations in india and abroad shri kanan sir has very keen interest in our sanatana dharma and he is one of the sought after speaker on various ancient scriptures and religious topics in english both in both as well as tamil on various platforms shri kanan He is also the editor of spiritual magazine Dilip started at the instance of Shri Mahaswami of Kanchi published from Mumbai Shri Kannan ji delivers discourses on various religious topics conducted online lectures on Shankara Stotra Makaranda for about 6 months Adi Shankara Stotra's lectures series for one month Mukha Panchasati lecture series and on the cultural history of Kashmir including Raja Tarangani. He has also contributed articles to various repeated religious magazines with the divine blessings and directives from the Shankaracharya Guru Parampara of Shri Kanchi Kamakoti Peetham. He, he authored about 40 books including writings and translations which include Shankara Stotra Makaranda, lecture notes of select Shankara Stotras, commentaries on shri rudram and chamakam shri guru bhujanga stotram adi shankara ashtotra satnamavali amaranatha mahatyam shri pada saptati lalita trisati kanchi mahima pitrukarya a compendium of important rules shruti mukta phalam shrimad ramayana dharma sangraham commentaries of ashtapadis and way and many others shri kanan ji was also awarded the titles jagat guru seva ratnam and upanyasa tilakam we welcome you sir and and also to introduce our uh, saraswati swarupa padma mami briefly shrimati padma raj gopal gopalan garu is <coughs> from kanchipuram she is the daughter of adiya palam shri ramakrishna dikshitar who was a renowned sanskrit scholar and had served the shrimat during the times of 68th 69th in 70th acharyas of shri kanchi kamakoti peetham she is well versed in sanskrit and music and has been taking shloka classes for children at all sens and housewives for the past two decades her masterpieces include mukha panchasati saundarya lahari and shivananda lahari she dedicated her life her expertise and knowledge to her father and her guru mrs ram rama ramakrishnan in addition to tutoring people as per shri periwas guidance from across indian metros many people from around the world connect to her for learning these treasures we welcome you mummy dear astikas it is time for us to lend our ears to this eloquent speaker kannan sir in english the meaning of lalita sahasranamam in english a thousand word hymn on our universal mother i request kannan sir to take over thank you sir ృణాలయంకరం లోకశంకరం సదాశివ సమారంభాం 
ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯಮಧ್ಯಮಾಂ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯಪರ್ಯಂತಾಂ ವಂದೇ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರಾಂ ಸರ್ವಮಂಗಲಮಾಂಗಲ್ಯೆ ಶಿವೆ ಸರ್ವಾರ್ಥ ಸಾಧಕೆ ಶರಣ್ಯೇ ತ್ರಂಬಕೆ ಗೌರಿ ನಾರಾಯಣಿ ನಮೋಸ್ತು ಟುಡೇ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಅನ್ ಎ ನ್ಯೂ ಸೀರೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ಲಲಿತಾ ಸಹಸ್ರನಾಮ ಶ್ರೀ ಕಾಮಕೋಟಿ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಕೇಂದ್ರ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಎಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಆರ್ಗನೈಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ಸೀರೀಸ್ ದೇ ವೆಂಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಅವರ್ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಜಿ ಹೂ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬ್ಲೆಸ್ಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ಸೀರೀಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಹಿ ಬ್ಲೆಸ್ಡ್ ದ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ಸೀರೀಸ್ ಆನ್ ಮೂಕ ಪಂಚಶತಿ ಒಂದೇ ಗುರೋರ್ ಮಂಡಲಂ ಎಕ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ now it's indeed uh, my pleasure to be associated with this lecture series on lalita sahasranamam lalita sahasranamam is a part of brahmanda puranam which has a section called lalita upakhyanam lalita upakhyanam that is story of lalita it goes into 40 chapters this lalita upakhyana and it is in the form of a conversation between sri hayagriva and sage agastya all of it is about lalita's glory devi lalita's glory and this lalita upakhyana is followed by lalita sahasranamam which we are now going to look at and a few other ಸಹಸ್ರನಾಮಂಸ್ ಆಫ್ ವಾರಾಹಿ ಶ್ಯಾಮಳಾ ದೇವಿ ಎಕ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ಪಂಚಮಿ ಸ್ತವಂ ಸ್ತವರಾಜಂ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಲಲಿತಾ ತ್ರಿಶತಿ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ನಾವು ಹಯಗ್ರೀವ ಹಿಂಸೆಲ್ ಈಸ್ ಎನ್ ಇನ್ಕಾರ್ನೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಹೂ ಕೇಮ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದೇವಿ ಇಸ್ ಗ್ರೇಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸ್ಟೋರಿ ಇಸ್ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಡೀಟೇಲ್ ಇನ್ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ದೇವಿ ಭಾಗವತಂ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ i'll i'll refer to it briefly after uh, waging a long battle with asuras vishnu became tired and retired in a corner unknown to anybody and he sat there with his sharanga bow supporting his skin and he slept off because of uh, his exhaustion and after some time he sort of took on this sharanga bow and the sharanga bow cut off his head he lost his head and that was the time when devendra brahma and others were looking for him for presiding over a yaga so they went and searched for him everywhere finally they located him here and they were shocked because such a great sound this calamity had happened they were shocked then uh, brahaspati advised uh, devendra to pray to devi so all the vedas who had assembled there murti mat deva they prayed to devi devi said this is all with a purpose his head has been lost in the ocean go and bring a horse's head and attach it get it done through vishwakarma that was done and then immediately hayagriva came into being this is the story so this was entirely due to devi's grace that hayagriva came into being and also he got initiated into devi's knowledge by devi directly now this is a conversation lalita upakshanam is a conversation between that hayagriva and sage agastya and who is agastya agastya is one of the 12 devi upasakas manushchandra kuberascha lopa mudra ata manmatha agastir agni surjascha indra sandha shivastatha krodha vatta rako devya dvadashami upasaka these are the 12 great upasakas of devi manu chandra kubera lopa mudra who is the wife of agastya manmatha then agastya himself then agni surya devendra chandra that is subramanya shiva himself then lastly durvasa who is known as krodha bhattaraka now this conversation starts with um starts with prayer of uh, agastya to hayagriva requesting for story is explaining the glory of devi that is how it starts then he uh, starts explaining lalita upakhyanam in lalita upakhyanam he start, uh, the hayagriva starts with the story of how bandasura came into being 
this Bandasura came into being from the ashes of Manmatha. When Manmatha was reduced to ashes by Shiva's third eye, the Devas headed by Indra, they made the ashes into a form of a human being. Then uh, they requested Shiva to give life to that assembly of ashes. Then Shiva looked at those ashes and there came out an Asura, Bandasura. And Bandasura did intense tapas and prayed to Shiva and got, as usual, some boons. And then he started uh, torturing devas, etc., etc., the usual story. Then the time came for Bandasura's destruction and Devi came into being. How she came into being, Lalita Parameshwari. Then because devas were very much feeling miserable, they prayed to Devi. At that time, Devi said, you conduct a yaga. That is why she is known as Chidagni Kunda Sambhuta. That yaga in which there was a Chidagni, there was a Agni Kunda. From that Agni Kunda came Lalita Parameshwari. And she, they, they was prayed to her and then she agreed that she would kill Bandasura. And uh, because she, as a woman, she wanted to be, uh, Brahma and other devas wanted her to be coronated. And during Patabhishekam, during coronation, a woman cannot be coronated on her own. So Brahma decided that there should be a Purusha along with her. Then who is the Purusha? Then they said Shiva should be the person. Then they prayed to Shiva, then Shiva came there as Kameshwara. Lalita became Kameshwari. So Kameshwara, Kameshwari is marriage takes place, then Kameshwari becomes Maharagi. She gets coronated, Patabhishekam is done, then she goes to war and then Bandasura is annihilated. This is the story of Bandasura. After the story of Bandasura, Lalitopakhyanam goes into seven khandas explaining the greatness of Devi. First is Mantra Khandam. Mantra Khandam explains the greatness of Panchadashakshari Mantra, the greatest mantra of Devi. Next only to Shodashi. Then goes Nyasa Khandam. Nyasa Khandam, there are Shodha Nyasas, six Nyasas associated with Devi worship. Then comes Puja Khandam. Puja Khandam talks about Antaryagam, Bahiryagam, and Mahayagam. <coughs> I had occasion to refer to this Antaryagam, Bahiryagam, etc. during my lectures on Saundarya Lahiri recently. Antaryagam refers to the mental worship of Devi, generally associated with Kundalini rising from Mooladhara Chakra going up to Sahasrara. Whereas Bahiryagam refers to generally worshipping in a Sri Chakra, Meru or Sri Chakra Yantra. Now Mahayagam is the outer worship combined with the mental worship. Then comes Purasharana Khandam. Purasharana Khandam is about the Japa, Japa part, how Japa should be done, Japa Lakshanam. Then Homa Khandam, where Homa Vidhanam is prescribed. Then Rahasya Khandam, very important. In Rahasya Khandam, Hayagriva explains to Agastya that what is known as Sri Vidya, the Sri Vidya Mantra, the Panchasakshari Mantra, Sri Chakra in which she is invoked, and the person who is invoked, the deity who is invoked, that is Sri Devi, and the Guru who initiates you into the Sri Vidya Mantra, and the Sadhaka who is being initiated, that means how many people? Five, Sri Vidya, Sri Chakra, Sri Devi, Guru, and Sadhaka. All the five are one and the same. This identity is established in Rahasya Khandam. That is the Rahasyam. Unless you go up to that stage, you will not understand this identity. That is why he is explaining it in detail. Then this is followed by Sotra Khandam. In Sotra Khandam, there are Sahasranamams of Mantrini Devi, Dandini Devi, Lalita Savarajam. Many sotras are there, sung by Brahma and other devas. Many of them are there. Then this brings us to the end of Lalita Pakhyanam. Then Agastya becomes restless. That is how this Purva Bhaga of Lalita Sahasrama starts at this point. He says, Ashwana Namaha Buddhe Sarvashastra Visharada Kachitam Lalita Devyaha Charitam Paramadhutam. He calls the um, uh, Hayagriva Ashwanana, nicely, Bahabuddhe Sarvashastra Visharada. You have explained to me the very beautiful, the very wonderful story of Lalita Devi. You have told me how she 
came into being from the yaga kunda performed by devendra how she was coronated patabhishekam how shri puram was constructed how panchadishakshari mantra all that whatever we saw just now all those seven khandas all that you have explained now you have not explained to me something which is very important that is lalita sahasra namam do you consider that i am not fit enough to receive that instruction or is there any other reason this is the question put to hayagriva by agastya then hayagriva replies saying yes it is very secret rahasya miti matvaham noktavan se natanya tha because it is secret i did not unveil that to you but since you are a bhakta of devi and since you have asked for it see two reasons he is giving you are a bhakta and you have asked for it now he is also this has been explained very nicely in commentaries uh, there are other argument given by agastya i am not going into them to which uh, hayagriva replies the commentary says that this lalita sahasramam and such esoteric mantra should be taught only to those who have shraddha who have bhakti number 1 and number 2 who have asked you for it now a person who has shraddha or bhakti and who has not asked for it can also be taught provided you are convinced that he is a deserving party deserving student but a person who has no shraddha or no bhakti under no circumstances should be taught this this is what hayagriva goes at pains to explain then he goes into the Uh, a preliminary introduction of lalita sahasrama here at this point hayagriva he says puranam shri puramiva shaktinam lalita yatha shri vidyo pasakanam cha yatha devo varashivah tatha nam sahasreshu varame tat prakirtitam puranam shri puramiva of there are many cities being described in puranam yes, but nothing like shri puram similarly there are many shaktis but the nobody like lalita devi there are many shri vidya upasaka devotees of shri vidya but nobody like shiva similarly there are many stotra of devi but this is the best lalita sahasramam is the best like this he starts shri matuh prite tasmat anisham kirti edidam so because of that reason you should Chant the Zalita Sahasrama every day for the pleasure of Shri Mata. How this Zalita Sahasrama came into being? He explains. I agree with explain. Puraji Zalita Devi Bhakta Nam Hita Kam Yaya Vag Devi Vasini Muksha Samahu Yadam Abravit Bhakta Nam Hita Kam Yaya for blessing devotees. Zalita Devi called eight Vag Devis, Vasini and others. these names we saw earlier also in one of our earlier lectures and uh, i'll come back to it later vaishni modini etc there are eight names now these eight vagya vagdevi were called by lalita devi and she gave them an, an instruction kurudbham ankitam stotram mama nam sahasrakaihi yena bhakte sturaya me sadya priti para bhavet you compose a stotra containing thousand names of mine and by chanting the stotra when devotees chant the stotra i should become pleased this is the condition this is how the sutra should be composed itya jnata vacho devya shri devya lalita ambaya sahasya yar nama bhir divya hi chakku sutra manuttamam after all these vag devi are also amshas of lalita devi only so they were able to compose this lalita sahasra nama quickly tata prova chalaita sadasyan devata gunan mama agnya eva vag devya chakku sutra manuttamam then he called all the devatas he said because of my instruction this sutra has been composed by vag devi sat patadvam sada yuyam sutram atpriti vriddhaye so please go through this chant this sutra every day for increasing my happiness my pleasure 
प्रवर्तयध्वम भक्तेशु मम नाम सहस्रकम ऑल्सो प्रॉपिकेट दिस स्त्रोत्र अमंग माई डिवोटी दिस वॉज द इंस्ट्रक्शन सो दट इज हाउ ललिता सहस्रनाम कम्स इन टू बींग दिस इज द पूर्व भाग नाउ मेनी सहस्रनामम ऑल्सो हैव फॉलोड दिस वाराही श्यामला देवी एक्सेट्रा आफ्टर ललिता सहस्रनाम बट of all devi sahasrana as i said earlier we have mantrini dandini sahasrana was also part of lalita upadhyanam but of all devi sahasrana lalita sahasrana has been considered the best by all the sages now there are many commentaries written on this lalita sahasrana many many at least four are mentioned by vidwans and of them the best is bhaskar raya commentary now bhaskar raya is a sage who was born in maharashtra and shifted to tamil nadu and he was he enjoyed the patronage of the maratha kings of tanjavur who gave him a village called bhaskar rajapuram near kumbakonam the village was given to him in his honor and uh, bhaskar raya spent his last days in tirubadai marudu in madhyarjuna kshetra which was referred to by our acharya swami ji very recently <coughs> when he referred to mahalinga swami showing his hand outside from outside his lingam and saying advaitam satyam so that was the place of mahalinga ishwar swami tirubadai marudu so that is where he spent his last days and a lot of stories are associated with his greatness now this bhaskar raja has written a very beautiful commentary on Raita Sahasrama, and he refers to what is known as Chalakshara Sutram. Now, this Chalakshara Sutram gives guidance on how to split the words. Now, there are combined words in Raita Sahasrama. Now, how to split? Where to split? And how to split? On this guidance is being given by Chalakshara Sutram, and the Chalakshara Sutram itself has been explained by way of परिभाष सूत्र परिभाष सूत्र बाय ए सेंट कॉल्ड नृसिंहानंद यज्वा दिस नृसिंहानंद यज्वा वाज द श्री विद्या गुरु ऑफ भास्कर राया सो दैट गुरु हिमसेल्फ हैज एक्सप्लेन इन परिभाष सूत्र सो ही इज टेलिंग वेरी क्लियरली हाउ ईच नेम शुड बी इंटरप्रेटेड वेयर द स्प्लिट शुड हैपन हाउ इट शुड बी इंटरप्रेटेड सो ऑन दैट बेसिस भास्कर राया हैज डन द स्प्लिट एंड he finds that all these thousand names start with 32 aksharas 32 letters of sanskrit alphabet as you know there are 50 letters in sanskrit alphabet of which 32 are the starting letters for this thousand names and bhaskar raya is at play, pains to explain that all the names are mantras that is why lalita sahasranam is a mantra shastra So, see, apparent meaning is what we are going to see now. We are not going to see the mantra aspect of it because that is esoteric. Now, each name actually refers to a mantra, like we saw in Saundarya Lahari. Each sloka refers to a bigger mantra, which is not obvious from the reading of the sloka. That has been explained by great commentators. Similarly, uh, Bhaskar Raya also has explained that each nama refers to a bigger mantra of Lalita Devi. The whole Lalita, uh, Lalita Sagar Nama. is actually a mantra shastra and the whole of sahasranamam can be treated as one mala mantram also because each of it is a mantra it it can be treated as a mala mantram now what are the subjects covered in lalita sahasranamam apart from the general the constant theme of bhakti mantra shastra is covered which is shri vidya then yoga shastra is covered kundalini yoga is covered and on the top of it advaita vedanta is covered now there is one speciality about lalita sahasranam which is being expounded by many vidwans and that is this is perhaps the only sahasranamam where there are no sobha words that means meaningless words in other sahasranamam you will find like in between you will find a cha you will find a y etc now you will not find a cha you will not find a y in sahasra lalita sahasra that is the greatness of this and no repetition of words no pounaruktyam in many sahasra namams you will find 
that words are repeated and the commentators have been at pain to explain give different meanings though the words are repeated they refer to different meanings that is how they explain but the fact remains that the words have been repeated but here there are no words repeated and uh, well there are many many such glories of lalita sahasrama enjoyed by many vidwans now uh, coming back to those uh, Vak Devis, the eight Vak Devis who composed this Lalita Sahasrama. I got the names now. Vashini, Kameshwari, Modini, Vimala, Aruna, Jaini, Sarveshwari, and Kaulini. These are the eight Vak Devis. Actually, they are known as Vak Devis. Actually, they are the ones who were commanded to do this Lalita Sahasrama. And they are actually Amshas of Lalita Devi only. Now, we will start with the actual... Text of Lalita Sahasrama. We will start with the four Dhyana Shlokas. Sultan Mama. Sultan. Shema Thayna. Sindhur Aruna Vigraham Dinayanam Manikya Moolis Purat Sara Nayaka Shekharam Mitamukim, Apina Vakshoruham, Panibyam, Anipur Narasra Chashakam, Ratsot Palam Bibhati, Somyam, Ratna Gatastha Ratta Charanam, Yayet Param Bikam. As all of us know, Yadhana Shloka brings us the picture of the form of the deity on whom the Sotra is directed. So here, Lalita Devi's form is being beautifully, the picture is being beautifully brought to us so that our focus, our mental focus will be on that form. See, unless you have a mental focus on a form and a name, Nama and Rupa. Nama Rupa is essential for our mental focus because we have not reached a stage where we will be able to focus our mind on a Nirakara, Nirguna, Parabrahman. Yes, Jnanis can do that. But for ordinary people, you need a Nama and a Rupa. That is where the Dhyana Shloka comes handy for giving us the Nama and the Rupa. Sindhura Aruna Vigraham Trinayanam Anikya Maulis Thuratu Tara Nayaka Shekharam Sindhura Aruna Vigraham She is pictured as red in color because Devi has been pictured in different forms, in different colors. If you see Adi Shankara Kamakshi Sotram, Every sotra he gives a different color, including green, black, etc., etc., and he explains. So here in Lalita Devi, which color are we associating her with? That is Aruna, that is the red color. That is Udaya Surya. Udaya Surya is Aruna. Aruna is the charioteer of Surya, and he comes before Surya. So it, there is a red color in the sky when Aruna Udaya comes. So that is the Aruna Vigraha, similar to a Sindura color. Sindhura, as you all know, is red in color. So this Aruna Vigraha is also similar to Sindhura. Sindhura Aruna Vigraha. Red colored like Sindhura. Sri Nayanam, having three eyes like Shiva. Surya, Chandra and Agni are the three eyes of Shiva. <coughs> Similarly here. Manikya Maulis Thuratu Taranayaka. Taranayaka is the lord of stars, nakshatras. That is Chandra. So... Devi has Chandra on her head, on the top of her crown. Mauli is the crown, and the crown is studded with Manikya, ruby. Manikya Mauli is Purati. On that crown is shining, Purati, shining Chandra. Smita Mukhim, Abhina Vakshoruham, Smita Mukhim. Gentle smile, that is always the uh, hallmark of Devi. Gentle smile is the hallmark of Devi. She is very compassionate. She looks at devotees with a smile and blesses the devotees. Api in a with large, huge uh, bosom. That is the place of milk, the, the milk of jnana for the devotees. So we should look to Devi for the milk of jnana. Panibhyam Alipur Naratna Kashakam Bhaktotpalam Bibhrati with her two hands. Alipurna Ratna Kashakam. In one hand, she is holding uh, a cup, a gem studded cup, Ratna Kashakam, a gem studded cup which is full of 
madhu honey and on that madhu because of its sweetness there is a group of bees ali is bees ali purna there is a, it is covered with bees and it is full of that madhu and another hand she is holding raktot phalam red colored lotus flower raktot phalam bibhrati bibhrati means holding saumyam saumyam means very enchanting very pleasing saumyam ratna ghatasya rakta charanam jayet param ambikam ratna ghatasya rakta charanam har feet are also red colored like blood blood colored rakta charanam and where is you placing her feet she is placing her feet on a ratna ghata a pot gem studded pot it can be interpreted in two ways it is a gem studded pot and it is a pot holding ratna it can be interpreted as ratna ghata can be a ghata which is studded with ratna or a ghata holding ratna both ways it is applicable because those are ratnas which she is holding for distributing among devotees now ratna should not be interpreted as uh, gems it should be interpreted as anything of value anything of value which we are seeking from devi is what is going she is going to give us so jayate param ambikam the supreme ambika there is no shakti higher than ambika so she is known as param ambikam adi shakti para shakti adi para shakti these are the various names by which we call her. ambika means mother it is the mother element which we should always be focusing our attention on because the first name itself is same mata so we will go to that so at that time we will know that mother element is the best for us for from the devotee's point of view we should concentrate on the mother element jayate that is how we should meditate sindura aruna vigraham trinayanam manikya mauli sphurate saranayaka shekharam natamuthim apina bakso ruham पाणीभ्याम अलिपूर्ण रत्न चषकम रक्तोत्पलम बिभ्रतीम सौम्याम रत्न घटस्थ रक्तचरणाम जायेत परममबिकाम अरुणाम करुणा तरंगित अखीम धृत पाशं पुष्प पुष्पवान चापाम अनिमा जिबिरावृता मयूकैः अहमित्येव विभावये भवानी Aruna is already we have seen red colored devi. Aruna tarangita akshi. Her eyes are full of compassion, waves of compassion. Compassion coming in waves. Aruna taranga. Taranga is waves. That means what? Every time you look at devi, there is a different level of compassion. It comes in waves. The more devotion you show, the more compassion she shows. So Aruna tarangita akshi. Dhrita pasha ankusha pushpa bana chapaam. Now, in the first uh, shloka, we were told there are two hands in which she was holding two different objects. But here we are told there are four hands, and she is holding four different objects, different from the previous one. So that only shows that Devi's form is beyond description. She will come in this form or that form. In fact, there is a shloka in Devi Bhagavatam where when Devi appeared before Deva. So some devas she appeared with four arms. So some other devas she appeared with thirty-two arms. And so Devi Bhagavatam says, so some devas she appeared as holding thousand arms, sahasra bahu. So this is not something to be uh, doubted. This is something which should be appreciated, showing the glory of Devi. Dhrita paasha ankusha pushpa bana chapaam on. Uh, hand she is holding pasha another hand she is holding ankusha ankusha means the the gourd pasha means the rope pushpa bana the flower arrow uh, we are going to see all these in detail when we go to the sahasrama name chapa means the bow the ikshukodanda that is the chapa the bow so these are the four items four things she is holding in her four hands anima dibihi avrutam mayukhaihi mayukha means rays we have seen this in saundarya lahari in one shloka uh, adi shankara explained that this eight ashta maha siddhi eight maha siddhi like anima etc anima mahima etc they are taking the form of devis they are taking the form of devis they come out in the from lalita devi in the form of rays mayukhaihi but 
After coming out, those rays take the form of eight Ashtamaha Siddhi Devi, and they are acting as Dwara Palaki in the Sanvidhi of Lalita Devi. They are acting as doorkeepers. This is what uh, Adi Shankara explains in Saundar Lahiri. Same is briefly mentioned here. Animadi Bihi Avrutam Mayukhaihi. She is surrounded by rays who are actually the eight Ashtamaha Siddhi. Ahamitke Vibhava Ye Bhavani. This is very important. For the devotee to get maximum benefit, she, he should identify Bhavani, that is Lalita Devi, as being present in himself, as not something present outside. Ahamityeva, I am Bhavani. That feeling he should entertain when he reads this Lalita Sahasrama Sotra. In fact, for any puja, this is required. Devo Devalaya, Deho Devalaya Prokto, Devo Deva Sanatanaha. This is the bhava which has been enjoined on any puja devotee. The body is the temple, and the jiva which is in the body is actually Parameshwara himself. So, similarly, here we should entertain the notion that we, we are Bhavani. When we are doing, doing, reading the sotra, chanting the sotra, Aham. You should meditate on Bhavani in what with what sense? Aham iti eva. Eva, that means it is enjoined on you. You should do only this way. Eva means only this way, not any other way. Which way? Aham iti. I am Bhavani. With that feeling, you should meditate on her. This is very important for getting the maximum benefit. If you think she is a third person sitting somewhere in Sripuram and then we are praying to her and then she is going to bless us, yes, she will bless us, no doubt. There is nothing wrong with that approach. But the, what is the better approach? The better approach is that she is seated right inside me. She, I am praying to Devi who is seated right in my heart and she is going to bless me from my heart. Arunam karunatarangitakshim dhritapa jankusha pushpabana chapam animadhiviravritam mayukhaihi शांतमूर्ति सकल सुरनुता Another beautiful Jhana Shloka. Jhayayati, how we should meditate. Padmasana Sam. She is sitting in Padmasana. Of course, it can be interpreted as sitting on a lotus, but better interpretation is she is sitting in Padmasana. There are many asanas in which people can sit. So one of the normal asanas is Padmasana. So she is seated in Padmasana. Because it's a vadanam, and her face is like a fully blossomed lotus. Because it means blossomed. Fully blossomed lotus. Because it's a vadanam, padmavat rajat akshim. Face is like fully blossomed lotus. And how are the eyes? Eyes are very long, ayata. Very long, like lotus leaves. Padmapatra ayata akshim. He mabham pitavastram. This can be interpreted in two ways. Uh, the yellow garment which she is wearing, Vastra, is shining like gold, Hema Bham. That is one interpretation. Another interpretation is Hema Bham. She is herself shining like gold. Devi herself is shining like gold. And she is wearing a yellow garment, Pita Vastram. Kara Kalita Lasat Hema Padbam Varangim. Kara Kalita Lasat Hema Padbam. She is holding in her hand a golden lotus. She is holding in her hand a golden lotus. Lasati, the golden lotus naturally is shining. Shining golden lotus is decorating her hand. Varangi, all her limbs are beautiful, excellent limbs. Sarva Alanka Rajaktam. She is having all the decorations which one can think of. In fact, Shastras prescribe the best of decorations for women. Best of decorations. What are the best of decoration? What kind of earrings? What kind of nose pad? What kind of necklaces? What kind of Udyana? What kind of Kantana? What kind of Angada? What kind of Nupura? Everything is prescribed in Shastra. So she is having all of them. 
सर्व अलंकार युक्तां सर्व अलंकार युक्तां अतःतम अभयदाम हियर इट इज प्रिंटेड अ सकलम अभयदाम बट द बेटर वर्शन इज सततम अभयदाम सततम मींस ऑलवेज अभयदाम मींस शोइंग हर जेस्चर ऑफ फ्रीडम फ्रॉम फियर शी नीड नॉट शो बाय हर हैंड द जेस्चर ऑफ फ्रीडम फ्रॉम फियर इट कैन बी इट कैन बी बाय हर इमोशन satatam abhayadam by merely looking at devi you will lose all your fear that is the meaning satatam abhayadam always granting freedom from fear that is even by going to her by approaching her all your fear will disappear always satatam bhaktanam ram bhavani shri bhavani bhavani means consort of bhava consort of shiva on meaning second meaning is she is herself that Devi who creates Bhava means create. Why Shiva is known as Bhava because he creates the universe. So here Devi creates the universe. So in fact, that is the first of the name Shri Mata means creator. Bhakta Namra and devotees go and pray to her. They bow down to her. Bhakta Namra Bhavani Shri Vidya. She is actually Shri Vidya. Now Shri Vidya is the mantra. The Pancha the Shakshari mantra is known as Shri Vidya. she is the mantra and mantra is devi that is shri vidyam shanta murtyam the vigraha of peace by looking at her you will develop peace why we go to temple and look at dev devas and devis because we want to develop peace because we our minds are agitated we are caused by several worries now we want to get rid of those worries get rid of those agitations from our mind so we go to temple and have darshan now that is why she is shanta murti shanti is the most important virtue shanti is actually described in bhagavad gita as moksha itself ashantasya kutas sukham bhagavan asks in bhagavad gita if you don't have shanti how can you be happy how can you say you are comfortable you cannot be comfortable if you don't have shanti This is the question raised by Bhagavan Himself in Bhagavad Gita. So, by even having darshan of her, you will develop shanti. Shanti murtim, sakala sura no tam, worshipped by all devas, obviously. Sarva sampad pratatri. She is the bestower of all kinds of wealth. All kinds of wealth. Sarva sampati. So, wealth does not mean only cash, bank balance, the house or the car, etc., etc. Which normally is our understanding of wealth actually wealth is anything which adds to the value of your life it can be moksha if you if moksha is what you on or focused upon and if moksha is going to add value to your life in fact that is our that should be our aim that that is sampat moksha lakshmi there is ashta lakshmi we have isn't it santana lakshmi dhanya lakshmi so all of them are sampat only various forms of sampat and the final sampat is moksha then she is going to give us that also if we pray to her dhyaye padma sanastham vikasita vadanam padma patraya takshim hema bham pita vastram karakalita lasat hema padmam varangim sarva alankara yuktam satatam bhayadam bhaktanam ram bhavani shri vidyam shanta murtim sakala suranutam अलिकुंबिकूरी का ध्यान kumkuma vilepanam she is having kumkuma lepa on her body that is already red in color that is what is indicated she is looking as if she all over her body kumkuma has been applied kumkuma vilepanam 
Alikachumbi Kasturi Kam. Alika means forehead. Her forehead is decorated by Kasturi, Kasturi Tilaka. Samanda Hasitekshanam. Her eyes are showing Samanda Hasita. That is gentle smile. Gentle smile is coming out from her eyes, not from her mouth. Samanda Hasita Ikshanam. Sasharata Papa Shankusham. This is already mentioned earlier that she is holding Pasha, Ankusha, and Shara, that is arrows, and Chapa, bow. Asha Jana Mohini. Who is there who is not enchanted by Devi's presence, by having Darshan of Devi? No one. Ashesha. That means there is nobody who is not enchanted, who is not deluded. Mohini. Mohana, Mohana is delusion. There is a sense of delusion when you have Darshan of Devi. You become one with her. You cannot take your eyes off her. You cannot take your mind off her. That is Ashesha Jana Mohini. All people. Arunamalya Bhushambaram. She is having ornaments and also red color garlands arunamalya bhusha ambaram ambara means all over her body she is having different types of ornaments japa kusuma bhasuram japa vidhau smare rambikam she is shining bhasuram means she is shining like what like japa flower like japa flower the red colored japa flower Japakusuma Bhasuram, Japa Vidhau Smaret Ambikam. This red color is mentioned again and again. First it was mentioned as Aruna. Then it is mentioned as Sakunkuma Vilepanam. Then it is mentioned as Japakusuma Bhasuram. Why is red color is coming for repeated mention? Because red color is an indication of compassion. Poets, Vidwans associate red color with compassion. That is why red color is mentioned repeatedly. So we are looking to her for compassion because we know that we are not qualified to receive her blessings but we are looking only to her compassion for receiving her blessings so that is being mentioned in this form sakunkuma vilepanam alikacham bikasturikam samandha hasitekshanam sasharata papasham kusham ashesha jana mohinim arunamalya bhushambaram japakusuma bhasuram japavidhau smare dambikam now we go to the Lalita Sahasnama Sotra itself. Shimata Shimahara Gishima Simha Saneshwari Chidagnikunda Sambhuta Deva Karvya Samudhyata. The first there are a thousand names. The first name is Sri Mata. The first three names, Sri Mata, Sri Maharajni, Sri Simhasaneshwari. These three names refer to three main functions, that is creation, sustenance, and destruction of the universe. Shiva is supposed to be doing Panchakrityas, Panchakritya Parayanaha. So out of those five, the three are mentioned here. The remaining two, that is Pirodhana and Anugraha, is are covered in the remaining 997 names. All those 997 names are for the purpose of explaining Pirodhana and Anugraha only. The first three names only are referring to this creation, sustenance, and destruction of the universe. Now, first is creation of the universe, Sri Mata. She is the glorious mother of the universe. Sri refers to glory. Now, glory is something, three is something which can be interpreted in a thousand ways. Now, the normal way in which we should interpret is the four purusharthas, dharma, artha, kama, and moksha. The four purusharthas are three for us, that is the one which is shreyas for us, that is the wealth for us, aishwarya for us, these four. We should be after these four. And the two, Artha and Kama, are only for sustaining the body, not for any other purpose. Dharma and Moksha are for taking our soul towards Devi. So, Dharma is supported by Artha and Kama. Artha and Kama on their own have no meaning. It should, they are Artha and Kama are secondary, subservient to Dharma. Dharma is the primary one. And with the help of Dharma, we approach Moksha. So this, all this knowledge, all this activity is guided by Sri Mata. That is why she is known as Sri Mata. She is the mother 
very compassionately, very kindly, she takes us on the path which will lead us to moksha. That is, that is why she is not just an ordinary mother. We have crores of mothers in this earth. We have ourselves had crores of mothers in our crores of janmas. Every janma we have had a mother. And in our future janmas also we will have a mother. Now, those mothers are all, no doubt, very beautiful. They have all been very compassionate. They will be very compassionate. But that compassion fades into insignificance before the compassion of Devi. That is why she is known as Shri Mata. Now, Shri has been interpreted in Veda as Veda itself. Because Samani Ajogam Shri Sahi Shri Ramrita Satam. This is what Veda says. Because Samani Ajogam Shri, the three Vedas, Rig Veda, Sama Veda, and Ajur Veda, Sahi Shri Hi Amrita Satam. These Vedas are Amrita for virtuous people. And that is Shri. Sahi Shri Hi Amrita Satam. For virtuous people, these Vedas, the Vedic knowledge is undying Shri, undying wealth. Shri Hi Amrita, undying wealth. So Shri refers to Vedas and Parabrahma Swarupini. We are talking about Radhita Parameshwari, not as the consort of Shiva. This I explained uh, in detail during my lectures on Saundari Lahiri. That is, Parabrahma Swarupini is different from Shiva Patni. Now, Kamakshi is the best example I had said at that time. Because Kamakshi temple, the Kamakshi Vigraha home we see, is not Shiva Patni Kamakshi, is Parabrahma Swarupini. Because that Parashakti came out from that villa, from that cave, uh, for the purpose of killing a Nasura called the Bandhakasura, and then she stayed there at the request of the prayer of Devas, that is Kamakshi. Then the other Kamakshi, generally known as Bangaru Kamakshi, actually is an emanation of that Kamakshi, and that Bangaru Kamakshi married Shiva. So though she is also known as Kamakshi, that Shivapatni is different from the original Mula Kamakshi. So, similarly, here we are talking about Parabrahma Mahishi Lalita Parameshwari. We are also going to talk about her being consort of Shiva. Yes, Kameshwara, Kameshwari. We just now saw it is going to come again. But that is the emanation from that original Parashakti. The emanation, the secondary form of that original Parashakti. So, that original Parashakti, Parabrahma Sarupani, who is described in this first sloka, is actually Veda Sarupani. That is why. She is known as Shri Mata because it was she who taught Vedas to Brahma. Yo Brahmanam Vedasati Purvam, Yo Vay Vedascha Prashino Titasmai. Veda says this who created Brahma and who taught Vedas to Brahma. That is Veda Swarupini Parameshwari Parashakti. And on the top of all this, as far as ordinary devotees are concerned, she, like a compassionate mother, she gives us the milk of jnana, milk of knowledge, plus she is the remover of tapatraya, the three miseries. Because what is the benefit of a mother? Mother should give us nourishment, milk, food, and mother should also help us from uh, obstacles, from difficulties. Facing When we are faced with difficulties, mother should come to our help. That is what she does. So she gives us the milk of knowledge and she gives us the relief from tapatraya, adhyatmika, adi bhautika, and adi daivika. These are the three tapas which are constantly harassing the humans. Adhyatmika is something which is inborn, which is there with us, mental. Adi bhautika is coming from other living beings. Adi daivika is Forces of nature, like lightning, like bhokampa, etc. Et so, three types of miseries are always awaiting the human being, and mother is the one who is going to help us. Sri Maharajni, she is the empress of the universe, who protects the universe. What is the meaning of empress? Not sitting in a throne that is coming there, Simhasana is coming. Okay, that is fine. But sitting in the throne is not enough. She should protect the universe, isn't it? The king and the queen. What is their main job? To protect the subject. That is the aspect of protection, the sustenance, the second of the Panchak Pritya, who protects the universe as 
Maharajni, she is Maharani, Maharajni. So because of that, she possesses the absolute power and authority to be able to give us the protection. See, you go to somebody for protection, for help, and if that power person is himself powerless, he has no authority, what will he do? He will only sympathize with you, isn't it? Very often, we go and explain our misery to some one of our friends who cannot do anything to help us, who can only sympathize. So what is the use of that? But here we have an empress who has all the power, all the authority to help us. So she is the protector of the universe. Srimat Simhasana Eshwari. The Simhasana itself is Srimat, glorious. The glorious throne, Eshwari, who is occupying the glorious throne. Now, why is he, it is known as Simhasana? Because her, uh, of course, all the kings are generally seated on Simhasana, lion throne. There are two lions on both sides of the throne. Yes. Apart from that, in this particular case, Simhasana has got a special meaning because for Lalita Devi, her vehicle is lion. And what is that vehicle used for? For destroying the Asuras, isn't it? She rides the lion only for destroying the Asuras. So, same as Simhasana Ishwari is a term which has been interpreted as pointing to destruction, destruction of the universe, destruction of Asuras during the normal time, destruction of the universe when the time comes for destruction. That is Simhasana Ishwari. In fact, there are Vidwans who say that actually Simhasana means Himsasana because in uh, Sanskrit Yakarana, there is a procedure of inverting the letters. So, though it is written as Simhasana, actually what is meant is Himsasana. So, the one which causes Himsa, causes violence, to the, causes destruction to the universe. Chidagni Kunda Sambhuta. She is born out of that Chidagni Kunda. Now, why it is known as Chidagni Kunda? Normally, Yaga Kundas are known as Yaga Kundas only. Where Agni is there. Agni Kunda is fine. But why Chidagni Kunda? Because that is where Lalita Devi herself is coming emanating from that Agni Kunda. Naturally, if there is an Agni Kunda from which Lalita Devi herself emanates, it has to be only Chitagni. Chitu means knowledge. Sati Chitu Ananda, out of which Chitu is what is represented here. Because Lalita herself is Chitu and the Agni Kunda is also Chitu. Everything is Chitu. So nothing is different from Chitu. In fact, Indra constructed a very large Yoga, uh, yoga Kunda <coughs> at the behest of Devi herself, Devi herself told him to construct the Yaga Kunda and conduct the Yaga. Kundam yo janavistaram samyak kritva tushobhanam maha yaga vidha nena pranidha yahutashanam. This is what Dalito Parthana says. High River tells this to Agastya in the previous part. So, Kundam yo janavistaram, one yo jana is 13 kilometers. That is the size of that Kunda. From that Yaga Kunda, Yalita Devi appeared. Now, why it is known as Chidagni? Because it is only Jnana which can destroy karma. We have seen before. Jnana Agni Sarva Karmani Bhasmasa Kurute Duna. Repeatedly, Bhagavan says in Bhagavad Gita. It is only Jnana Agni which can reduce karma to ashes. So, that is what Lalita Devi emanation is meant for. Because she is going to destroy Bhanda Asura and other Asura forces. In fact, Jnana stands for light, agni, and ignorance stands for darkness in all our uh, literature. So that is why Lalita Devi, who is Parabrahma Swarupini, herself appearing as, appearing from the Chidagni Kunda. In fact, there is a beautiful shloka in one of the sotra. Antar nirantar nirindhanam edhamane Mohandhakara Paripanthini Samvidagna. This shloka is quoted by Bhaskar Raya in his commentary. Antar Nirantara Nirindhanam Yedhamane. For Agni, you always need a fuel, isn't it? Without fuel, there cannot be any. Nirindhanam. But here we have a very peculiar Agni which has no fuel. Where is that Agni? In your heart. In your heart is that Agni. Nirantaram, always that Agni is there. That is Parabrahma Swarupam. Mohandhakara Paripanthini Samvidagna. That is that Samvit Agni, Chit Agni, the Jnana Agni. That Jnana Agni will destroy Moha Andhakara, the darkness of delusion. The Jnana Agni is the destroyer of the darkness of delusion. And it is there always burning brightly in our heart. 
అంతర్ నిరంతర నిరింధనం వేదమాని ఇట్ ఇస్ బ్రైనింగ్ బ్రైట్లీ వితౌట్ ఎనీ ఎక్స్టర్నల్ ఫ్యూయల్ సో దట్ ఈస్ ద చదగ్ని దట్ ఈస్ ద చదగ్ని కుండా విత్ దేవేంద్ర ఎస్టాబ్లిష్ అండ్ ఫ్రమ్ దేర్ షి వాస్ షి అప్యర్డ్ దేవకార్య సముద్యత షీ కేమ్ అప్ షి అప్యర్డ్ ఫర్ వాట్ పర్పస్ షి అప్యర్డ్ ఫార్ ది పర్పస్ ఆఫ్ హెల్పింగ్ ద దేవాస్ దేవకార్య సముద్యత షీ వాస్ కీన్ ఓన్ హెల్పింగ్ ద దేవాస్ she was keen on helping the deva doing the work of deva deva kaurya samudyata this is what devi durga saptashati also says devanam karya siddhartham avirbhavati sayada utpanneti tadaloke sa nitya abhidhiyate sa nitya api abhidhiyate she is known as nitya eternal why because always she appear for the purpose of helping deva devanam karya siddhartham so in order to destroy asuras like bandasura mahishasura at all she appears always devakarya samudyata time is up so we stop for the day we have made a good start with harta uh, sasnam after going through the important aspects of purva bhagam we have now started with harta uh, sasnam sutram we have covered five out of thousand names the first shloka covered five names the the three functions of creation sustenance and destruction and followed by her appearance for helping us we should not take devakarya samudyata as only devas who are stationed in devaloka no all of us all our karyas also will be helped by lalita parameshwari if we pray to her that is the indication of that so we uh, stop for the day we meet again next saturday for the english lecture the tamil lecture is there tomorrow every sunday from 7 to 8 similarly in tamil the same kalita sasnama will be covered tomorrow we make a start like we started today in tamil tomorrow so uh, we meet again namaste uh, everyone guruji uh, just just a second i have unmuted everybody uh, uh, i uh, guruji will have some questions so if anybody has any questions they can unmute themselves and ask questions okay. um so guruji just uh, one there was one question from rajagopal sir he wants to know the book that you mentioned or the sutras that you mentioned which tells us how to split the words in the lalita sahasra naam mm. uh, what is the name of the sutras or the book uh, that you mentioned ah the main of the sutra if you go to bhaskar raya's commentary you will find it properly instead of my telling the name okay you go to bhaskar raya's commentary he is mentioning that clearly it is known as karakshara sutram and it is being explained in paribhasha sutram the first is karakshara sutram the explanation is in paribhasha sutram sutram paribhasha means uh, definition uh, what is mentioned in karakshara is the splitting of akshara is being explained further by giving some definition uh, by this vidwan uh, if so, anybody has any question Bhaskara please unmute commentary. yourself yeah. yeah thank you guruji uh, okay. if anybody has any question please unmute yourself and ask your question namaskaram guruji Yeah. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Guruji, um, Namaskaram. I would just like to ask, is it okay if I refer Lalita Sarsanamam with the book that has been uh, published by Radha Mansion? The Ramakrishna Mansion has released a book, actually. The cover will be in brown color. So, mm-hmm. is it okay if I refer to that book? So what is your question? <clears throat> the lalita sarsanamam can i refer to that book and and recite my lalita sarsanamam can, can we use that book that is your question yes guruji ah uh, yeah yeah you can use that book that is by anand okay. subramanian published by ramakrishna matham correct yes yes the same okay. that's the book that, that's a very good book excellent book you can refer to it of course okay, the lalita sutram etc he is not mentioning because there is so much of detail for that you have to go to bhaskara okay guruji okay. Hmm. okay thank you guruji thank you any so other I questions think, no more questions i think no sir more. i think we call off yeah i just had a question uh, the tamil link for tomorrow's lecture will be uh, shared uh, uh, in the group the or the whatsapp group it's everything is provided all the details in the flyer as well as in the whatsapp group all the everything is there no no he is asking about the link for tomorrow yes yeah, sir it correct. is there it is given it is there the, it, it is given in the flyer in the tamil yes, flyer yeah yeah correct same same like okay. given in the tamil flyer it will also come up in our group uh, maybe now tomorrow
ನಮ ಪಾರ್ವತಿ ಪತೆಯೇ ಹರ ಹರ ಮಹಾದೇವ ಶ್ರೀ ಜಗದಂಬಿಕಾಯ ಜಯ ಜಯ